Hey, what's up everybody? It's BDF44 coming at you with another video. All right, so Ben Simmons returned to practice for the Philadelphia 76ers yesterday. Um, and, you know, it looks like he's ready to go. I, look, this is a situation right here where it's a million different things that could be actually going on. Uh, the outside public doesn't know much of anything other than what the media tells us, uh, what's confirmed uh, by, by woes and people who, who directly get their information from these sources, and ultimately what we see. Um, ben Simmons addressed the media, uh, or rather the Philadelphia fans, in a short video that I didn't see in full, but he was essentially saying he was ready to get, you know, ready to get back to work. He missed seeing people back in stands and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know if that was a new video footage or, or not. I saw it in a splice video on YouTube, so take that for what it's worth. But the, the moral of the story is it looks like Ben Simmons is officially ready to be a professional and put back on the Philadelphia uniform and get, get going. Um, my theories about what ultimately the Philadelphia 76ers should do, nah, I guess I was wrong. They should not have done any of that because apparently they were able to get the player back. Now, do I have my skepticism about what both parties are actually doing here I do I have quite a bit um, I know Phil Philadelphia would like to not have to worry about Ben Simmons going forward um, now does that mean that the solution to that is to get rid of him it depends on how he feels about going playing for the team right now um, if, if he's ready to go if he got his his whole, you know, circumstances straightened out and he's ready to play for their team, um, then, then, then they don't have to trade him and they should be fine with that. He's one of the best defensive players in the league, and ultimately they don't have the proper playmaking ability uh, out there in trade to uh, kind of get back what he's going to be bringing to the table if they lose him. So there's 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 that's a no-brainer. They're a better team with him. And then only, obviously any deal that's out there. So for them on the court, yes, they definitely are happy he's back. For them as a franchise, after what he, they just went through with him, um, you know, some people would want him gone. You know, <laughs> some some would want him gone. I think some of the fans are kind of relieved that they're going to have just their full team on the floor. It seems. Um, so I think a lot of fans are probably okay with him coming back, even though they're rolling their eyes. I think it, ultimately they know they weren't going to get the type of trade that they wanted for him and. Him playing is going to ultimately raise his play, trade value. So either way, if you're a fan, you should probably want him out there. And, um, you know, as far as he's concerned, again, you, you don't know what the player's thinking until you hear from him. Um, that's that. That's literally that. I've speculated plenty about this situation. I've speculated about his mindset, where his head's at. I thought he was being irrational. A lot of this time and I thought he was speaking it was his behavior was speaking to a desperation of wanting out of a situation that was very toxic for him but if he was able to go somewhere figure all that out come to his own conclusion that he wanted to continue playing ball and not go down this path of ultimately driving his price to the floor and then ultimately making it so that maybe people want to blackball him in the future uh, which I thought would be bad for him particularly because of his particular weaknesses in the game how easy it would be to blackball him i think this is the only move that really helps him have a career in this league going forward without some of the bumps and hiccups that ultimately would come from seeing this through it's an ugly situation on his part um it costs a heck of a lot less to do this uh, to tuck your tail between your legs and go forward without ego Understanding that the only way to truly make this situation right is to first suit up, treat this season like a brand new season, go out there and play the basketball that your name should be attached to, and then from there, let the rest speak for itself. There are worse places to play in this league. You can find yourself in one of those situations in, in trade, so to be careful what you wish for at all times. But most importantly, understand how much money's on the line realize how much that was going to hurt you long term and help hurt whatever you got going on long term uh, when you have secured funds in the bank the last thing you want to do is give them back to your employer so at this point i think he's making the right decision in at least playing ball and if the situation if they've 
said enough to make him feel good about his season this year, uh, then go out there and play for the Philadelphia 76ers because this is year one of a long contract. And it's going to end up somewhere. It might as well be, um, you know, somewhere you know you can win. And ultimately, Philly is still a place we know can get you to the, get you there. I mean, as long as you got Joel Embiid next to you, you're going to be in the mix as a contender in the Eastern Conference. Um, where he would have went, maybe not, <laughs> depending on what his situation would have been. So, you know, I mean, not the way I thought it would play out. I'm not sure it's done playing out. Uh, but responsibly speaking, I'm just waiting to see what happens. You know what I mean? Uh, it's easy to speculate. It's easy for me to get up here and say all kinds of stuff about, oh, he's faking the funk. Oh, he's about to pull a James Harden. Oh, he's, he, you know, he really doesn't want to play for Philly. They didn't do nothing. He's probably going to the sabotage stuff. All of that could come to mind if you really want to go there. But honestly, this Kyrie thing has really taught me something. It's taught me to pay attention to what the player's doing. The player's doing this. He's showing up. He's facing the, the, the fire. Obviously, he didn't want to answer any questions. He left before the media got in, in the practice facility, but he showed up. And that tells me he's ready to, to collect his check. And and that speaks to him kind of coming around and understanding uh, the severity of what it is that he's doing. And, you know, I think the NBA is finding that the big circumstances that they're faced with with these different players, these situations are all being resolved one by one. You saw Wiggins and his shot situation went away with no problem. This Kyrie situation, well, we'll see how you know he he addressed the public, and I think he's going to go forward whatever with whatever it is he decides. But at least at this point, as far as I'm concerned, it's resolved because you've heard from the player. You know what his intentions are. There's no confusion. You know you didn't get him to get the shot, but at least you know where you're headed as a franchise, where you're headed as a league, as it pertains to that player. And finally, this situation. Where it looks like Ben Simmons is ready to come back around and now be a professional before the season starts. Um, so this is a good thing, you know. You're, you're happy if you're if you're a fan of these these particular players and these particular teams, and you're happy if you're the league as a whole, because you didn't need all of this. It's good for the media and their narratives, but this is not good for you. You want players on contract that want to play, and most importantly, you want full compliance um, in regards to your vaccine situation, because at the end of the day, you are a league, and you kind of want to have United Front as it pertains to whatever stances you want to make. So I, I get the the relief that a lot of NBA people may have right now in regards to a lot of this stuff that's coming about. Um, so now that Ben Simmons is in place from Philly, my question is, what happens with John Wall? Who, <laughs> I know this ain't got nothing to do with Philadelphia, but I think John Wall's trade request was only put in place so that it can be swapped for Ben Simmons. I don't even think he re requests that trade if Ben Simmons wasn't um, on the block, to be honest with you. I don't think he wants to just be traded to Cleveland or something. Or, you know what I mean? Like, the best situation for John Wall probably would have been to go to Philly. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with John Wall. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get traded this season. He may end up being held out for a while because uh, I don't think that's a desirable contract for anybody in the league. Nobody's going to want that. The only person who would want that is the Philadelphia 76ers if they were to get rid of of, of, of Ben Simmons and couldn't find anything else and I mean anything else so that's going to be the thing I'm paying attention to now John Wall is a perfectly healthy star level point guard who can sway the tide if he goes to the right situation um, that's what it really comes down to I know a lot of people don't believe he has a whole lot left in the tank um, I'm not one of those people I'm just not I know that even though he's not as strong as he may have used to been, he's still faster than everybody else because of the speed he already came into the league with before the injuries. He's still going to be fast enough. So it's, it's one of those situations where because I understand that, because of a fan, how fantastic of a playmaker he is and how far his jump shot is coming along, as well as how fantastic of a defender he is since he's already one of the greatest shot-blocking point guards of all time. <laughs> if you look at the stats, he really is. Then you understand John Wall is not just a regular guy. And if he finds himself in the right situation, like I said, he's going to make some things happen for that team he goes to. So that's going to be the thing. Do the Houston Rockets just run it back with John Wall? And does he kind of derail Kevin Porter's development in a way? Which I think is worst case scenario being that Kevin Porter, when I actually found out what type of player he is, I realized that he shouldn't be behind anybody at all. And Cleveland is, um, yeah, that's a whole other story. Now that I know what type of player that is, actually, actually did homework on him. Now I'm looking at Cleveland like, anyway. So, 
with that being said, that's going to be interesting to see what happens with Houston. We'll be talking about them. Uh, as far as everything else, yeah, man, season's, what, a day away? We got a day, you know, it's, it's, it's coming along. Of course, I'll be talking to you guys very soon about everything that I, I you know, that I surmise is going on. I'll pay attention to as much of it as I can, and I'll give it to you. My name is BDL34, and that's what I got, man. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.